I move. Yep. I think so I will start uh, because I think uh, uh, I got a message that on the Slack that Zainab will be not be joining today, but I, may, I was unable to reach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, no, no. today. Hello? Yeah, so today we'll be fine. looking at. Okay, so today, 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 so let me just start the meeting. I think we'll start it. But it's like your mic, you need to mute your mic. There is background noise from your end. Thank you. So I start in the chat so that. Uh, so today we'll be looking at uh, chapter 16 of the book, uh, which is about uh, coordinate system. Uh, for the learning objective, uh, we'll be looking at uh, what are the code functions, because when working with the coordinate system, there are two uh, basic things. We'll be looking at the linear coordinate system. Uh, we are also going to be looking at the nonlinear coordinate system. Uh, we will we'll see how we can uh, differentiate between these two coordinate systems uh, when we are working with uh, any visualization uh, using uh, ggplot2. So we are also going to learn about what are the difference between the code functions. Just as I said, the code function, we, I can classify them into two, the linear and also the nonlinear. Uh, for the linear, we have the default one, which is always uh, the Cartesian coordinate system that's any visualization. Uh, in which we create uh, using ggplot2. Uh, it's always going to be on the default. The default coordinate system is always uh, the, the Cartesian coordinate system. So we'll see that when we change this from this, moving from this coordinate system to another, how it's going to affect uh, our visualization. So we are going to also learn how to use uh, this uh, coordinate system when we are plotting uh, using ggplot2. So, that is basically what uh, we have uh, for today. So uh, feel free to interrupt me at any point if something is not clear. So like for the introduction, they said the coordinate system in ggplot2 can be managed by the use of the code functions. Okay, this is done when we want to zoom into the into a plot in a particular area, just like uh, we discussed in our previous discussion when we are looking at the scales. We can also, we can use the scales to zoom uh, to a specific area in our plots because we can specify those, the zoom limits within the scale. But we are going to see the difference between uh, the scale, zooming into the plots using the scale and also the coordinate system because when we are zooming into a specific area of the plot using the scale, so any data points that fall outside that range in which we specify in our limits. So ggplot2 by default is going to drop uh, those data points. But the reverse is in the case when we are using uh, the Cartesian coordinate system because once we specify the limit, uh, ggplot2 is going to retain all the data points. So it's just like we are looking at the plot Using a magnifying glass, so we are. So we'll see that in a in a demonstration part. We are also going to flip the axis of a plot. Uh, maybe there are some times uh, in which uh, we create our visualization in which uh, we are having a lot of overlapping text in the x axis. But there are some times we can flip the x axis and put it in the y axis, then bring the y axis place it in the x axis. That is, is what we call the cut flip to flip the coordinates. We can also set a fixed aspect ratio for a plot. 
So uh, the fixed aspect ratio is just like the x and y axis is going to be given a fixed scale. And we're also going to see how we can transform uh, the coordinate system because within the code, we can pass a specific transformation either to the y axis uh, or to the x axis of, the, uh, of, our, of our visualization. We're also going to change the shape of the plot and also sets the coordinate for a map uh, projection. So that's all what we'll see. So I think in this year, there is an example whereby the year they, are, they were loading the tidy vest. They are also loading the patchwork package. The patchwork package uh, is a very good package in which we can use in combining different visualization, patching them together. So here they were using the iris and then they look at the head which will give us uh, the first six rows of this data. So we can see we have separate length, separate width, better length, better width, and also a uh, species. So I don't know any question up to this point. Okay, so. We yeah, are good. So the first part, looking at the linear coordinate system, we are going to look at the code Cartesian, we're also going to look at the code flip and also the code fix. So, and for that, so I will just share a new window. I'll share a new window. Okay, so for this, I'll be using uh, I'll be using Visual Studio Code for this example. So I just quickly run uh, the my library, which is a uh, tidyverse, which is going to we are going to have access. Uh, to the to the core tidyverse packages. So uh, for the linear coordinate system, we are looking at zoom into a plot with code Cartesian. Okay, so we have just this default plot where we have MPG. Uh, this is the MPG data set. We can view the data set to see uh, what is there. We just have a manufacturer model, displacement, year, mm -hmm. cylinder tribe, uh, transformation. So we map. Uh, displacement to the x-axis. We map this to the y-axis. Uh, we say jump point since we want to display, what we want to display is a scatter plot. And we just add a smooth line using jump smooth. So if I run uh, this, I can just view the full data set. We can view it. Okay, so we can view, let me stop this again. View the full, can you see the plots? Hello? I couldn't see the plots. So I'm just seeing the as you are okay. running the coach. So, and, uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Let's see. Yeah, this is the plot. Yeah, I could see the plot okay, now. So this is the plot. So we have highway, we have displacement. So this is just the default plot showing showing the full data sets. So let me share. Let me share. Let me continue. Share that again. So now, so now we can just say scale S continuous. Remember, I said we can zoom into the plot using the scale. So in this uh, scale, I specify limits. Okay, I specify limits that I want to zoom into between four uh, and also six. So I want, this is the limit I specify. I want, so any data point that goes outside of this uh, range, outside of this range in which I did not specify, ggplot2 is going to return warning. We can see that it's returning, it's returning a warning that 153 rows containing non-finite value in start small, 153 rows contain non-missing values in jump point. So those data points, uh, let's show the plots in which I just uh, uh, created. Okay. So let's see, we can see these plots now. So, so those data points uh, that falls outside, those data points that fall outside of the range of these uh, plots, those points that fall outside, those range of four and six in which I specified, uh, ggplot2 is going to ignore those points 
uh, as if there is going to treat them as missing data. So how do we overcome that? How do we overcome that in which we want to zoom into this plot and we want to retain all our data points? So in order for us to overcome that, we are using a new function, which is the code Cartesian. So the difference between code Cartesian specifying limits within the code Cartesian is that code Cartesian retains all the data points. It retains all the data points. It's just going to zoom into that specific area uh, in which we specify within the limits. It's going to zoom into that area then it's going to retain, it's still going to retain all the data point. It's just like we're viewing the plot using a magnifying lens. So when we run that, it's going to create a plot so I can quickly zoom. I can zoom in here. We can see that this is, this is the plot, okay? This is the plot. So it's just going to look at the plot. So anything that falls within that range is going to, reserve all the data point. It's not going to return uh, any warning, just like we see here when we were looking at the scales, the scale is going to drop some data point. It's going to return error message. We can see to say, remove 153 rows containing missing values in June points. But when we run this, there was not, we do not find such error message uh, in our visualization in which we are creating. So the, the next example now is code flip. Uh, and this code flip, uh, what the code flip does is that it's just like flipping the coordinates, flipping the coordinate, flipping between X and Y. So it's just going to bring what we have previously in Y, it's going to arrange, put it in the X. What we have in the X is going to place it uh, in the world. I think uh, this is also, this is very useful uh, when we have overlapping text, we can use this. So when we do that, code flip, uh, let's see it, let's share, let me share that. Okay, we can see now, we now have displacement in the X, we now have CTY, cylinder type in the Y axis. So that is just the difference between the code Cartesian, we can see how we use the code Cartesian. This one, we are, we are mainly flipping the coordinates. We move displacement from here. It's not place in the, it's just like interchanging between what we have between X and Y. But alternatively, uh, instead of we to do this, we can do it uh, directly in our plot. We can do that exchanging with directly in our plot, whether we now specify this should be the X and this should be the Y. Then we say jump point and then jump smooth. So once we run that, it's just like, it's just uh, the same thing uh, as what we had here. So I don't know if there are any questions up till now. So, but we can also, uh, okay. So we can also, we can also do that here. We can also do that here. We have, uh, we can do our code flip here. Yes, it's still going to flip. Uh, it's going to flip. It's going to flip the coordinates. So this flips the coordinates. Okay. We can see that we have CTY in the X. We now have uh, displacements in the Y. Then this is now uh, the best fixed line foot in that plot. Then this band we are seeing is just uh, the 95% uh, percent, uh, confidence interval, which ggplot2 is going to do all this computation uh, in the background. So go back to my VS code. So now, I think now we are going to the next, uh, the nonlinear coordinate system. So before I talk about this, so let me quickly switch to the notes which I'm using, so please switch to the notes. Uh, we have seen, we have seen the code Cartesian. Okay, we have seen the code Cartesian where we have, uh, which is the default. So this, uh, this is just like we using code fix, pick, fixing both the X and Y in the fixed coordinate system. So this is just, we are mainly flipping it. 
we are mainly flipping the coordinates. Okay, so when we flip the coordinate, we can see what we got here. This is the initial visualization. We can see what we uh, got here. Okay, so we can see P, P3 plus code fix. Okay, this, this one is placed in the fixed coordinate system. Here we were using patchwork uh, to combine these two plots. You can see we have P3, we just have this symbol, then we have P3 plus code fix. So it's going to just arrange uh, those two plots sideways, which is very neat when we want to compare the difference between what we have in this visualization and also what we have in the other visualization. So for the nonlinear coordinate system, here we'll be looking at uh, three uh, different type of coordinate system. We'll be looking at a uh, cord polar, uh, polar coordinate system, like for the, our default bar plot, uh, in which I we create, you know, is always placed in a default Cartesian, the Cartesian coordinate system. So, but when we add, when we add, when we add a new uh, coordinate system, uh, we just say cord uh, polar, it's just going to flip it. Uh, we are going to have spirals, and we'll see, we'll see uh, that example. Uh, cord map and cord quick map is and um, cord SF. This one will use when we want to do some uh, geospatial analysis. We want to change our map uh, projection to place it uh, uh, in different uh, coordinate systems. So we also have cord trans. Uh, this code trans, we can pass some transformation to both the X and the Y coordinate system. So we'll see that. So here we had we had an example here using code polar. Okay, so let me go back to my VS code for that example, code polar. Or code polar. Yep. So here we have. I have a default data frame, which is red. So I create it here. So we can view the red. So this is just the red where X, X is 50 and Y is also 50. I also have a line. And for this line, X is one and 200. Y is also 101. So those are the, those are the two data frame I created. So yeah. What do I have here? I have uh, I have base, which is a base object I want to create. I use ggplot2. I did my aesthetic mapping here. Then geom tile, which because I want to create a tile uh, map, so I, I now use geom line. Then xlab, I just run this. Then I view the base plot. So the best plots uh, just give me this. This is the default plot I had. So this is the tile. This is the line. Okay. This is zero uh, to 200. This is also zero uh, to 100 in the y-axis. So this is my default base plot. So when I go back there again, so when I now add a new, coordinate system, so I say cord polar. Within cord polar, I say te, theta, theta is equals to x. So here I have theta is equals to y. So for the defaults, is always theta is equals to x. So when I say cord polar, because I want to move from the Cartesian coordinate system. I want to reproject this plot into a new coordinate system. So let's see what we are going to have from that initial plot. So from that initial plot in which I showed you that has, we can see when we pass it into a, a, a new co coordinate system, which when we added a new coordinate system, which is called polar, then theta is equals to x. We can see we are having something like a, a pie chart, something like a pie chart. Here we are just having a spiral. Uh, this is very, uh, very useful because by default, if you have a bunch of line graph, 
then we change the coordinate system, add a new coordinate system, which is called polar, is just going to convert those uh, uh, line graph into different spirals. So we are going to get spirals. So, so we need to be aware of that. So once we are adding a new coordinate system on ggplot2, it's going to change uh, a look of our visualization is going to change. So when we let me go back. So when I said cot polar theta is equals to y, let's see what we are going to have there. Let's see what we are going to have. We are going to have this visualization. It's still going to be spiral. We can this just like circle, circular spiral. So it's just going to give us that. So when we go back again. Let's see the next example. So theta plus uh, theta plus cut flip. So this one, we already know what is going to do that is going to rotate between X and Y is going to flip those two coordinate system. So base plus cut trans. So this one, we are placing the Y's axis on a log 10 scale. We are just passing a log 10 directly to the y-axis. We want to transform that axis, placing it on a log 10 scale. So when we run that, we are going to have this. So we are placing this y-axis here on, on a log 10 scale. So we just need to know uh, all these uh, techniques because when working with uh, ggplot2, so this is placing both uh, the x is placing both the x and the y axis uh, uh, on a fixed scale. So it's going to maintain that aspect ratio. It's going to ensure that the distance from here to here is the same thing as what we're having from here to here. It's going to place uh, the two of them, uh, they are going to be on a fixed scale. I don't know any question up till now. We are good. We are okay. Yes, yes, yes. What a polar coordinate with cord polar. I think we have seen this already. Polar coordinate with cord polar. Yeah, let's see this. This is just our default bar plot. So that we'll see this. It's our default bar plots. Let's see the bar plots. This is a bar plot that we got here. Okay. So this bar plot, which is name base. Okay. If I pass this bar plot, if I add a new coordinate system, let's see what we are going to have. When I have base plus cot polar, then theta is equals to y. So we can see that this bar plot is going to give us a pie chart. So maybe we want to create a pie chart. Uh, in R, we don't know how to arrive there. So we can have a bar plot in which we have already filled the bar, the height of the bar. So we can just change, add a new projection, which is called a polar, is going to convert it into a pie chart. So we can just pass in those, annotate those proportion for the year, annotate the proportion here as a text. You can just pass those annotation directly on the plot. So what do I have again? They say bold say this is the same example again. It's the same example where we say theta is equals uh, to x. So it's just going to be like a spiral. Oh. So this is just like a map. This is a map which we can see. And in this map, we are using ggplot2. Uh, we are using the map data package. We are getting the shape file for New Zealand. Then we are plotting it in R, where we say longitude should be in the X axis, latitude should be in the Y axis. We are grouping by group. Then the geometry, we are using geom polygon. Okay, to plot the polygon, we fill the polygon with a white color. We color the borders by black. Then we remove the X and Y axis la label. Then I print the plots. 
Then I print the plot for New Zealand, which is going to give me these plots. Okay, so so we can now place this using a new projection, which is the called quick map. Just as I say, it's for special. When I put it in using that new projection, we can see that this change the look. Uh, this change the look of the visualization in which uh, we see earlier because we are we projecting uh, this map. So we also have an example here where we are using the wall. We get the wall shape file. I have okay. a reaction. Okay. Yeah, when you pass for the aesthetics, you pass the long return and latitude, but there is no value attached to it. So how come you are able to come with that with that map? You don't pass any value to the long return and latitude for the aesthetics yeah. line okay. 94. I know, I know. That is why I want to view this so that you see. Have you seen the objects? Take it. Uh, oops. What did I run? Have you seen the shape file? Okay, we can see that we have the stick mapping X longitude, Y latitude. But if you look at this file, Closer, let's take a closer look of this file. Oh, so let's say, let me say class. Class of N, Z. Uh, Plus map underscore data and Z. Okay, we can see that here we have class map data is a data frame. So we can say can I have the head? Okay, so we can see we have what? Are you with me? Hello? With you. Hello? I'm with we you. Can you. <laughs> we have the longitude. We have the longitude. We have the latitude. The latitude. We have the group. We have the order. We have the region. And we also have the sub region. I now see. So, I now see. I now said, let X be the longitude. Let Y be the latitude. Then I group by this group. Okay. Then I said geometry. I'm using geom polygon. Okay. Because this is not an SF object. It's a data frame. I didn't mean it. It was a simple future. Uh, Objects, then I'm going to use Joom SF since it's a, it's a data frame and it's not an SF object, but we can also convert this to an SF object, but this is a data frame. Well, we'll see that in the next example, how SF object look like. So I now fill it by white color, okay? Then I say color is equals to black. The color equals to black is going to be the borders of that uh, map. Then, for the axis, I do not put any name. So once I run that, it's going to show me uh, that map I showed you. So in this example, if I use Scott Quick Map, it just is just going to change uh, the projection of the map. Okay, it's, go it's going to reproject that map to this new projection in which and it's going to maintain uh, the aspect ratio of the map. So for the exam second example, I am getting the wall shape file. Okay, shape file for the entire wall. 
using this map underscore data from the map data. And I'm assigning this to a new object called wall. So when I run this, okay, I can check for the class. I can check for the class of this object of, of world. I can check for the class of world. We can see that is what? It's a data frame, okay? We can see that it's a data frame. So what do we want to do here? We want to use this to create the map of the world. So we need to use ggplot2. We do the same example we see earlier on here, because in this also we can look at the head of world. Okay, we can see we have what longitude, we also have our latitude, we also have our group, we also have our order, which is the order for the various region, we have sub-region. So we do our aesthetic mapping here, then we are using jump paths. So what jump paths is going to do is that it's going to draw a line for the various parts. We'll see that when I run the code, then we're using scale Y continuous. Then axis name for Y, we set it uh, to null because I do not want to put any uh, label for that axis there. Then I'm specifying a default breaks. Yeah, I said it should go from minus two to three. That is a default breaks I want by 30, multiply by 30. Then the labels, I also set the labels to now because I don't want to put any labels there. Then I also go to the X axis also here. Uh, the labels, I set it to null, then I also specify some breaks. Uh, here I specify some breaks, then I say labels uh, should also be, the labels should also be null. So uh, when I execute this, okay, so I can, I can view that object. So I can view that object to see what we have. Oh, where is it? I can view that object. So this is uh, that object, uh, okay? This is the map of the world, okay? Though there are several ways in which I can still achieve uh, this. This, there is, there is, as I said, there is no one way of achieving anything. And also the, there are several ways in which I can go about this. So this is that map. So the next thing I want to do here, I go back to my Visual Studio. So I want to place this on using this map projection called, called underscore map function. So this projection is going to change uh, the look of that map. So when I pass it to that called underscore map, we can see that jump path in which we draw earlier on. You can see that line in which we draw a layer on for jump path is now clearly visible because code underscore map, we are zooming, we are moving in, we are changing the projection, reprojecting that map. We can now see uh, that line in which we draw a layer with jump paths. So, but there is uh, one other step in which I want to achieve here. So I want to use place this map on another code scale, which is the auto projection. So this auto projection, I also go to Google map, uh, get some projection and come and show one other example. So when I say auto, we can see that it changed the look of that map. Okay, it's just going to draw it in form of a spiral, a circular shape. So, but if I go to Google, if I go to Google map, Okay, so when I go to Google Map, I can search in my browser, Google Maps. So we can see Google Maps. Okay, so we just type Google Maps in my browser. Come here, go to more, scroll down. I will take this globe view because I want to group 
view this in form of a glue. Okay, so as minimize, 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 minimize. Go in till I get start glue. Okay, so this is the glue. Close this. Oops. Okay, so this is the glue. So I can rotate this map. Okay, let's say this is what I want to achieve. Okay, so I'll just click on any points in this map. Okay, when I click on that point, okay, it's going to give me these coordinates. Okay, I'll copy this coordinates gently. Then I go back uh, to my Visual Studio code. Give me that coordinates. Okay, so when I come here, I paste that coordinates here. Copy this code. So I'll just add a new line for, uh, for that coordinates. I'll just paste that coordinates here. Okay, I'll just paste that coordinates here for my zero. I'll just paste that coordinate. Sorry. Do I need to put it as a string? Pass to double, so wait. Auto. I'm coming, let me check why. Oh, sorry, I miss orientation of the plot. Yes. So when we run that, when I run that, let me be sure that I'm correct. Sharing. When I run that, oops. When I run that, there is no error message. So let me check the map. Okay, it's here. So when I run that, we can see that same map we're looking at in Google. That is the same, this is the same map here in R. So this is the initial map. This is the view. This is the initial, this is our view of the map. So when I copy uh, that code in which I, then I change, add a new argument for the orientation of the map. So when I go back, we can see that I have reprojected this, uh, I've reprojected this map to that exact map in which we saw uh, from the Google Earth by just adding a new line. Uh, to change uh, the orientation, the look. So go back. So this other ex last example is just going to change the look, is going to change the look, the same map in which we saw, you can see how it squished everything uh, together. So, but they do want us Uh, because when we go, to, they do uh, put some comments. So let's go back to the initial book. Let's go back to the initial book. We have seen all this. We have 
we are in the non-linear coordinates, we can see our default plots. Uh, when we change it to polar using theta is equals to y, we achieve this theta is equals to x. So we can see when we use cord flip, cord trans, placing this in log 10 scale and putting this x and y on a fixed scale. So like the example I did there, we have our default stack bar plots, uh, which is this, okay? So when we just say code uh, polar, we can see that we change it to pie chart. We can also change it to a radar plot. So for map projection, we have seen all this example. Yeah. I think this is where the three, the last three example I did, where we are, we have this that is being placed uh, using code map, or we can set that wall map using an auto projection. Uh, this I'd, I've hardly seen, but this I always see this a lot when they want to uh, do some climate uh, vis visualization using visualizing the global world temperature. Uh, they always like to change it using this auto projection. I don't know, uh, I think that is all uh, I got uh, from this chapter. It's just a short chapter. So let me put a, and the material stop and the charts.